Hello. I want it to be nice and warm. Nice and warm without the flies. Can we have that? Is that unreasonable to ask? I would have no issues with Australian flies if um, they were fast, like Asian flies. But no, your flies far out. They're slow. Like they, here's, a, here's a fly, right? Imagine this is me. This is a fly going. Swipe. Mm. And just, mm. You know, there isn't... Asian flies are like... For us, Australian flies. And just touch you, keep touching you. So after a while, you're just like, why am I even swatting at this point? Because every time I swat, you just go, hmm. We've sold these Lego sets. This is, um, you guys know I don't do variation listings, right? This is the only variation listing I have. The only one. Because... If I'm not certain of the, um, I'll, I'll backtrack. For those of you guys who follow the channel for like a long time, you know that I'm all about photographs. I believe that you, with great photographs, you can make an item shine. If you make an item shine, you give people reason to buy. Um, and it's not as and it's not as straightforward as just getting the item, especially when it's online. If there's no guarantee, if there's no guarantee that the item that they buy is the one that they're gonna get, anything to help that will make it better for the buyer. And help them to choose you. Um, most eBay sellers don't have a reputation. You know, we don't, and even customers who buy from reputable brands oftentimes get disappointed because the stock image shows a lovely pair of you know squeaky clean sneakers, white background. It gets shipped. It's a shoebox in a satchel, no bubble wrap. They open it. The box is dented because the courier didn't give a shit, and then it's just this gradual drop of satisfaction. Uh, different people have a different place where that line is before they go, this is outrageous, I want to return, hassle, I'm going to leave a negative review. You know, So even reputable brands get a head start. They don't have to put in the work, but they still need to deliver. And so um, for me, it's if you can find a way to take more photos to build your reputation and then to meet that, you'll get repeat buyers who will actually choose you over a big brand, even for items that the big brand does sell. Um, but this is my only variation listing because it's a very robust packet. It's you know really thick cardboard, it's Lego, it's really small, it's light. Um, there's nothing in the, in the product that makes it flex, I suppose, as well. So it's very well built. And I picked up, um, I think, almost a hundred of these different sets. This is the complete set, essentially. There's like six of them. Yeah. And I think these only came out in like the Lego store, so you couldn't actually get these that came out. Um, and I picked them out, I think, for $2 each. And we've sold, and I've got the whole complete set listed at $69.95. Uh, that's the only variation, variation list I've got. You either buy the whole thing, or you can buy them individually. And the funny thing is, these are going to... These have never sold locally at all. They've always sold internationally. I think that Lego in Australia is sort of like a very... Um, Okay, Lego as a whole, to me, mature market. Like, there's no doubt about it. Too many people playing in it. Um, if you want to get into the, the new Lego game, very hard. If you want to, but globally, the range is wider than locally. So it's like, if you want to get into the local Lego game and you're only sourcing locally, then you, you're going to have a lot of competition because everyone's just recycling the same Kmart target shit. Like, they just, you know, it's stuff that... And also... Unfortunately, a lot of stolen Lego on Marketplace as well, which makes it really hard for legit sellers to sell. Sub Drew. Um, so, you know, we're talking, um, you'll get a Lego set that, that you know, Kmart has for $22. Uh, Target has for $25. Target may drop it to $20 when they have a 20% off sale. And that's their strategy amongst themselves. And then you'll see that same set on Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks, clearly stolen because the set just came out last week. Um, but that's still available for someone who wants to turn a blind eye to buy, which means that you need to wait if you want to do the retail arbitrage thing. Um, but if you're, but if you're bringing stuff in from overseas, you could make, uh, you could make on the currency exchange. Lego is slightly cheaper overseas compared to Australia. Surprise so depends on the import taxes of the country, though. Like for when we went to Malaysia, it was more expensive. Uh, in the US, it is cheaper. So if you import directly from the US, it is cheaper. Uh, some regions of Europe, it is cheaper as well. Uh, so then what you're really trying to do is compete on range, availability of range. So if you're buying sets that are retired or 
not widely distributed, in which case we're talking Lego store instead of every store, then you can still pick it up at a good price, put it on eBay at retail times whatever multiple you think is reasonable. And especially if the bundling makes sense, like in this case, then we're talking a $10, a ten into $69.95 out plus international shipping. Um, and, and, it, and it matters because oftentimes when you tell someone you're doing, you do reselling, they already have categories in mind that they think people do it in. And Lego is one of the very common ones. Oh, do you sell Lego? Next thing they say, I read the article that Lego is more valuable than go. Like, yeah, everybody's read that article, right? Um, but context, context matters. And so just a simple, simple conversation like this that barely took five minutes, three minutes. And it's already a much deeper understanding of the game for that thing compared to people who don't who just read the article on Lego and Gold. A reseller is just someone who buys things and sells things again for profit. Um, if you find that a bit random and not sure what to make of it, how about this? Be part of the channel membership. It's $3.99 a month or $9.99. Top fan, channel champion. They both mean the same thing to me. Um, one just says thank you louder. Pick whichever one. Grateful for both. Uh, I post on the YouTube community page daily. So that's my gift to you in exchange for that monthly membership. We are the random redistributors in the market, which means a manufacturer makes something, they put it to a distributor, then it goes to a retail channel, then it eventually goes on sale, then it goes to a liquidation pallet. And then after a while, the manufacturer goes, well, that's the end of the line. And the seller goes, no, I will give you a second life because I have heard on the grapevine, my little birds have told me that your item, this item still has demand. And so then we go forth and we source these items again to give them new homes. That is all a reseller does. And it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's about spotting opportunity. Um, and I think we the thing we find joy in is that we are constantly keeping an eye on um, the thing we sell. You know, we constantly have our finger on the pulse, which is, um, which is a lot of fun. It's really exhilarating. Uh, those of us who do it full-time have done it for a while. I've been full-time coming to six years now. We used to do it part-time. Uh, it's the kind of thing where you know, you, they, don't, they don't really teach you this in school either. Makes you very aware of your surroundings. Makes you re really appreciate the world as well because everywhere you go, you're constantly looking at opportunities. You're constantly asking why uh, certain products are still in existence, why certain products were phased out. Uh, it makes you kind of almost like a journalist. I feel you know, looking for the story of why. Um, like here, here, like there's some really easy ones, right? Easy ones would be uh, why don't why isn't certain technology sold anymore because it's no longer relevant? It's obsolete. Yada yada yada. Uh, that's an easy one. And there are people who may still want to listen to vinyl because there's a quality to it. And then there's the other story of. Why is it that the toys today are not as good as the toys before? Because uh, cutting costs. You know, you, you, you want to know the reason why what's available in the primary market. And for those who don't know what that means, just means retail. Um, from manufacturer to the first point where you can buy it as a customer, that's primary market. Everything else after that is secondary market. So what we are in the secondary market, uh, when you assess the primary market and you go, why? And it really helps you to understand the things that big businesses are prepared to do and the things that they believe they is worth their time to do in order to make a profit for their shareholders and whatnot and to grow their businesses. It also helps you to be informed on things that they're not willing to do because of their share size, in which case then that's where you come in. So if you've chosen this as a career, you're curious to know uh, how to turn this into a living or even a way to make a small living, uh, there's a lot of space for reselling, even if you want to do it at a very small scale for a very specific category of items, you can be that person who makes sense of the random in that very, very, very narrow niche. Drew, you were asking about what are cars that sell. Here's another example of how simple this goes. Um, the, some of the most valuable cars you can sell are actually 
cars that re we talk we know we're talking about like cars that represent real cars uh, here's one another example of one that we've just sold today $15 mainline car mainline just means the common like $2 Kmart variety that you see uh, this is a Acura well Honda Honda Integra essentially GSR yellow like you've seen this on the road before this yellow this yellow Integra uh, it's got the colored the colored rear and the colored front. I'm not sure if you can see if this come, if that comes through the uh, camera or not. One second, I'll pull up the camera. See, don't sh stop shaking your fingers. Yeah. So like the headlights are colored, and the tail lights are covered, colored as well. Whereas most um, most mainline cars don't have that. It's usually if the rear is colored, the front isn't. It's just a black black or silver or whatever. So define, define it colored on both ends. Um, plain, which is what somebody would have driven back in the day. This is this sold for $15 plus international shipping going back to the States. Hilton's going, as a newbie to reselling, I hear a lot of US YouTubers keep mentioning about Q4 and how it's the best quarter for sales. Um, depends on the category. You know, people, Christmas stuff sells great at Christmas, but no other time of the year. Winter stuff sells great at winter, wherever it is in the world that winter happens to be. So very general statement, but obviously with Christmas coming around, people do spend more. Uh, so yeah, if you if that's what they're talking about, and that's usually what is they are talking about, then sure. But in Malaysia, on the other hand, it's not it's not that it's actually Chinese New Year because that's where because that's the the culture that gives money. So essentially, when you're in, in Chinese culture, you get red packets from your parents to then go and buy things. So shop a lot of shopping actually happens around religious and cultural festivals, not Christmas. Christmas is just one of the many holidays in Malaysia. Uh, so Christmas actually isn't the season. But in Western countries, I suppose, where it's Christmas, where the, I guess it's Christmas, Valentine's Day, yeah, you can't really you can't really outsell Christmas with Easter eggs. So yeah, it's Christmas and Valentine's Day, really. That those are the only two things in birthdays, right? Uh, so I guess that's why Q4 is big. Uh, but once again, your category has to also be Christmas present worthy. Otherwise, you're not gonna see a bump. Um, I don't see people who sell nuts and bolts, literal nuts and bolts, seeing a Q4 bump. Probably not. If anything, they see a Q1, Q Q1, maybe Q2, Q1, Q2, as they start projects again when they come back from holidays. Yeah. Category specific. Um, which is what Matilda said anyways. Um, yeah, they're looking to moving that way for Christmas at the moment. I don't have a niche, a bit of everything, anything. I will sell decent sales for rate. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, right? <clears throat> People only value the bump if their business needs the bump to average out to a solid business. But if you're a solid business all year round, you don't ever see the person selling rice going, I wonder how I can get in on the Q4 hype. You know what I mean? Like, like, you don't ever see that. You you see the Christmas tree seller going, I must get the Q4 hype to average out to be a good year because I need to put money aside to grow my trees and then to, you know, maintain my Christmas tree farm. To, But the rice person doesn't give a shit. Neither does the roti guy, neither does, neither does the bread person, you know. Like, okay, fine, with bread, I suppose you can make Christmas loaves. But you get the point. If you're, if you're in everything store that is consistent all year round, screw the Q4 hype. You're selling. Just keep focusing on being consistent and growing consistently. Um, because buying into the Q4 hype could ruin your store, similar to how if the rice person decides to make a green and red breed of rice to mix them together in the bag, nobody's buying that shit just because it looks Christmassy. No one likes Christmas colored rice. You know what I mean? So there needs to be context and it needs to be relevant to help your business grow. Otherwise, don't buy into the hype. It's not relevant. Be like the builders and just take Christmas off. Like, no one's buying nuts and bolts in Christmas anyways. <laughs> but I get what you're saying, though. How do I... There is mention that there is a wave of sales. How do I get a whiff of that wave? I get it. I get it. I'm being, I'm being, I'm being silly. I'm being a bit extreme. But I get it. How can I get a, how can I get a share of that action? Ta-da! Behold the Flying Scotsman. So this is... Well mint as you can tell it's got no dents whatsoever bottom is all clear um it looks like this kid the funny thing with the flying scotsman for me right is i'll put it here so you guys can see it oh no does this work 
Nope, doesn't work. Okay. So the beauty of the Flying Scotsman for me is that because it's so, like, I'm having trouble handling this. Like, I'm, it's flopping everywhere. Um, good luck expecting a child to do it. Essentially, they need to put it on the track, mount it one by one, drag it along. If it disconnects, they just be like, I have it, but I'm not going to play with it much. So oftentimes, the Flying Scotsman is actually very low use um, compared to, like, Thomas, that's very high use because it's easy to just drag around. So this actually sells in this condition. This is $300 right here. But it's very hard to find because oftentimes, they, it, if someone buys a bulk lot, you'll find this in one lot, and then you're kind of hoping to kind of piece it all together, and there are different versions of it as well. But if you can get it complete and in similar condition, you're looking at one 200, 150 to 200 for a quick sale, and then in mint condition, 300. So this has been my Christmas gift. This will get listed today, and it will probably sell for 300 by next week or the week after, because Christmas is coming. And Christmas is also the only time that parents buy the Flying Scotsman, I find, because who pays 300 bucks for a train any other time of the year, right? Would you, as parents? Probably not. Um, so yeah. Anywho, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for allowing me to do this. Bye.